You're welcome back. This is Confession on TV3 and I am here in the confession booth as your confessor with my pet in it. We are about to listen to the story of this young man. He says it is amazing. He's not been able to share it with any friend, nor family. But here, that's my job. As your confessor, I will sit and I will listen and we would have this conversation right here on Confessions on TV3. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Your name? Uh, for all intents and purposes, call me Kobina. Kobina, thank you for coming and okay. I'm here to listen to you. What is your confession? Uh, thank you once again. Uh, my case is a bit peculiar. Uh, as at yesterday was my honeymoon. Just last night? Yes. Mm. And as I sit here, I'm confused as to whether to go on or not. Mm. I dated this lovely girl for three years. Three good years. We decided to get married, mm. but I am a stout Pentecostal. Oh. So for us, we believe in chastity. Mm -hmm. So we decided not to have any intimacy whatsoever. No so, premarital sex, no pre simply. <laughs> when I say intimacy, meaning no kisses, nothing like that. Oh. Not to say that I don't get honey or I don't feel like doing it. Sometimes you feel your memory. And you were able to hold yourself for yes. how long? For three years. Wow. But wow. Uh, because of the prayer warrior thing, you know. So, of course, stayed in here. She's a very good Christian as well as I know. Mm -hmm. So my family went to help people. And I remember she would say in her own words, you know, don't worry, darling. They can wait, you know, we are virgins, it will be good, the Lord was blessed. Both of you were virgins? Yes, yes. Wow, oh, how beautiful. It's a problem to be a virgin at my age. Hmm. And it wasn't easy. But uh, after family doing the sitting, doing the engagement, we did a wedding, a lovely white wedding. Then we went into the room, of course. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a man now. You I'm are not a spiritual person anymore. Of course. I'm about to break the tip in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then she started giving me a squeeze. She wasn't in the mood and wasn't ready. On the wedding night? On the honeymoon. <laughs> so I was, me, I was pressed because uh, the thing has gotten up. Of me, course. Too, this is so a woman you adore. I coaxed and I pressed. Mm -hmm. Not in a ring form, but I pushed myself on there. And as I was about to penetrate, my chin touched something. It did. And I know as a woman, you're supposed to have soft entrails, but this one was something hard. Hey. Something was hard? When I investigated, my wife had a pins. She what? My wife has a pins. She has a penis instead of a vagina? No, she has both. Oh, what is technically called hermaphrodite? Yeah, and Man, I have read it in books, but I never knew. I mean, your wife is a Ghanaian. Yes, she's a Ghanaian. She comes from one of the very popular sites. I don't want to mention it before people are treated sure. to my religion. But very good girl, very good Decent Christian. girl. My problem is, starts Christian. I mean, under the circumstance, she had no person to run to than God. I mean, if you have both the woman and the man put together. But that not to tell something. you, should have told me. Mm. Mm. But now, what do I do? Mm. Honeymoon was yesterday. I can't even sit in the same room with her. Oh, my God. What do I do? Do I consider divorce? Okay. So, so when it, you, you touched it, was this soft or was it hard or? It was an erection, man to man erection. Oh yeah, my erect. God. She's erect. That will be scary. If that it's lifted and powerful with energy in it. That was my surprise. So mommy, what do I do? This is the story of a young man. For Christ, he kept himself. And for Christ, she says, she kept herself. Only for him to realize that my woman is not only a woman, she is a man and a woman put together. I am a man of God, stout Pentecostal. What do I do with this? I cannot even stay in the same room with her anymore, but we are legally married. Do I have a way out? Legally, do I have a way out of this marriage? Spiritually, 
Religiously, do I have a way out? Morally, am I supposed to opt out? These are the questions that will take us to the studio so that our counsellors and our studio audience will help out. On Confessions, you will hear these stories, weird, interesting, amazing stories, and more. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Thank you. And that was some confession. Gentleman that looks, saw this beautiful woman in church, loved her. She loved him back. They were faithful. They were obedient to the word of God. And now he's at a place where he's unsure whether he has to keep obeying the word of God or he should just call it quits. I obeyed the word of God and look at where it landed me. No premarital sex. Only for you to find a wife of your youth who is both man and woman. Dearies, huh, what do you think? Hmm. This is a sad story. Okay? Absolutely. But you see, those that call themselves Christians. I am a Christian. I'm a believer. <laughs> I know, but you see, they are making a disservice to most of the young guys in this country. Mm. In natural life, eh? In real the normal life. and the real terms. It's neither white nor black. You there don't have to follow days. everything that the Bible says. Sir? That is what is killing some of us. Mm. Look at the situation they are putting this gentleman in. For you, in we are can. You make us say, 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 a sorrow, 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 a so holy, in that holy. situation, you choose to blame the Bible and Christianity or the yes. religion for the predicament of because the young man. We that we are on the street, eh? We that they believe that we are the street boys, mm -hmm. eh? That they say we are we are pagans or we are we are not religious or we don't believe in uh, uh, Bible or religion, eh? We will do this openly. When I meet girl and I want you, mm -hmm. if it happen, if it happen, yes, sharp sharp, sharp sharp, if it happen, because see. If the guy has tasted the girl, eh? This thing wouldn't have happened. So, Look. He, so how many people would have tasted this decent, godly young woman who did not bring this predicament on herself? So if imagine she, number one tasted her and let go of her. Number two tasted her. Can you imagine what her life would be? Miss Nancy, thank you very much. I like the way you put things there. See, if the girl has been fair, Mm -hmm. And she says she's a Christian. And the Bible says we should talk the truth. But nothing but the truth. Why didn't she confess to the guy that now that we are dating, this is the problem I've been having throughout my childhood. Even my parents don't know. So if you like me, please help me. Okay. So there is a part where you do not lie. You do not talk when you do not want to lie. You know? Yes. Sometimes you do not talk when you do not want to lie. So she probably didn't talk. Not that she lied. Because oh, she's a Christian. I didn't offer the information. It doesn't mean that I'm telling a lie. Anyway, any other opinion? Yes, my lady. I think this marriage is based on deceit. Mm -hmm. Because she has deceived the guy. Mm. And it is not no, fair. No, 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 no. Maybe the yes. guy had never asked. No, wait. And there's no way you ask something like this. Yes. So I mean, who wakes up to imagine that exactly. my woman is you get a it. man? So and this a, one, so, you don't blame the lady. All so right. And then, uh, uh, do we go back to a place where we ask you your name and we ask, are you a man or a woman? <laughs> or uh, he, him, her? Go I mean, that is not see it. her or she, see she, him she, or she see her problem. <laughs> Yeah, she but knows her problem. She okay. knows what she is facing. Mm -hmm. So I think she should have told the guy no, that no, no, she no, should no. have offered the information. Yes, no, tell no, no, him. No, 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 no. Please, Nancy. Because yes, for lady. you know, that lady is also praying, you know. And God has for a husband. Good. And God has answered because mm. the man is the one who asked mm. for mm. chastity. Mm. Do you get it? We should live a chaste life. Both of them are probably no, no, but are according virgins. to their confection, mm -hmm. the man said he is a uh, Pentecostal and yes. they, he doesn't believe in 
sex before marriage. Yes. So he's waiting till they get yeah, married. Sometimes we, so you, you do not believe in something, but your partner can cause you to change your mind. But in this case, they both did not and believe in premarital sex. The lady is also a Christian. That's it. Yes. Yes, from the so same this comes to where she the prayed. counselors in churches so to where their, their shortcomings are. Hmm. And I'm glad that currently we have a counselor that is coming on the show and he will tell us exactly what he thinks. He is a man of God, he is a counselor, and even more, when we come back, he joins us on the stage and we get to know if the church is to blame, Christianity is to blame, the girl is to blame, or the man is to blame. Let's take this break, we'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Confessions on TV3. My name is Miss Nancy and a fine gentleman just joined us. One of Ghana's finest counselors, preacher man in the country. He actually is also a motivational speaker. His name is D.Y. Donko. He is loved by all. He is a pastor at a Royal Believers Chapel and City of Wisdom. And he brings his wisdom onto this matter of a Christian boy and girl loving each other doing right by staying away from each other physically intimately until the day of their wedding mm. they go to the honeymoon and the gentleman finds out that my woman is more than a woman she actually is a woman and man put together in between her legs man of god this is somebody's confession wow most of the problems we have in our marriages mm -hmm. are problems we could not handle when we were dating or when we were courting. Yeah. Now, we need to understand that you don't enter into a relationship because you are of age. You don't enter into a relationship because you think you are ready. Mm -hmm. You enter into it because mentally, emotionally, psychologically, you are prepared. Mm -hmm. So don't think because you are of age, you are 20, you are 21, you are ready for anybody to come into your life. Mm -hmm. You get ready because number one, you have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You get ready because you know what you want. You get ready because you are prepared for the journey. Mm -hmm. Now, looking into the situation, one thing we need to understand is that the lady wasn't good enough uh, to the man. I mean, she wasn't fair. Mm. Number one, before we go into the marriage, let's start from the courtship level. They dated for three years. They dated for three years. Dating is different from courtship. Okay. You date because you want to know who you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. You court because you are preparing for marriage. Mm. I'm sure they went through the whole process. That's how Thank you. got married. And then in the process of the courtship, the lady should have been able to open up to the man. Some of us, if you don't ask us questions, we don't talk. You don't need to be asked a question before you open up because, number one, if you mean the journey, you need to be open and transparent. If you are not ready for a successful marriage, then you are not ready for openness. I mean, this is a Christian brother. We all go to church. We are preached the word that uh, challenges will come your way. I mean, issues will come your way. Christianity is not all smooth. So I'm expecting that if this is my challenge and I get to find myself together with my husband, who is also a Christian, this is his challenge too, and we both have to deal with it. When you suffer, do not say you are tempted by God. It is your own desire. That has led you to be tempted. Oh, nyame do wa no sorry. Nyame so shall to me in person. Oh, really? Yeah. There are things that happen to us because of the choice and the decisions we make. Mm. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. Also, for don't yes, you think that, in all honesty, even if there was no sexual intimacy whereby I categorically state penetration, okay. there should have been a little bit of a romantic experience that would have caused him to touch me to realize that am I having real breast or it's just something that I have in there, touched me enough to have known that mm, what I touched is not that of a woman, it's like mine. Knowing you has nothing to do with sexual intercourse. I get to know you because you are ready for a journey. I don't yes. need to know you because... Yes, man of God, but this is the situation we're having at the moment. A mm. man finds out that my woman has a manhood. So the lady should have been open enough to speak to the man and explain a few things to the man. This is who I am. 
Do you love me for who I am or not? Simple. It has nothing to do with the pastor, the counselor, the church. she also needs a husband. No. And she's scared that if anybody got to know, they will leave her. So now that the ring is on and you're a Christian and you said for better, for worse, this is a typical experience so of So first words. of all, when they were dating or when they were in courtship, she should have been able to open up before they entered into the marriage. Mm -hmm. Now they are into the marriage already. Yes. But then it's still not late. The woman should have been able to open up to the man and say, look, I was afraid. I was actually to be dated. I feared that I might lose you. And because of that, I couldn't tell you the truth. This is who I am. Once he is in love, he genuinely loves. See, one so of the problems. Can you love your wife unto sin a penis? The power of love is not limited by the weakness of men. So for you. And so most often we go like, I love you, I love you, and we don't even understand the word love. <laughs> and so once we have sex with you, we dump you in the name of I love you. So we want to see your nakedness, we love you. We want to lie, we love you. How can you even love and lie? Mm. Mm. How can you portray? No, how, sometimes I wonder what is happening to our generation. That simply because you, because you want to see the nakedness of a woman, you go like, I love you. Yeah. I mean, those words are powerful. And it works on women any day, any time. Girls, am I lying? Oh, yeah, I love you. Oh, they are powerful. They are powerful. Especially Once it enters into your spirit, hey, you are broken. I no, I you know, <laughs> you know it, 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 there is something in that expression that takes away your ability to think straight. Mm. The moment you hear the words coming out of the mouth of a man, you adore somebody with a great So voice. then we see that you can <laughs> love with your heart, but think with your brain. Mm. Don't fall in love and go blind. Great. This gentleman situation, I mean, counselor, you have, I mean, commence the conversation for us. Okay. Let me get to the floor. And know, I mean, what these ladies and gentlemen think. Yes, my lady. Listener, their love you. It doesn't work on everybody. And action. Action, uh -huh. huh? We have moved from just words to action. Yes. Perfect. And then the so lady. in this situation, how does this gentleman that said, I will love you today, tomorrow, forever. I will love you till death do us part. This co co commitment is for better, for worse. Can you keep these words in that situation? <laughs> no, because she already broke the trust the guy has for her. Um, so, How? yes. She did not, not lie. If I tell you a lie. opening up to the guy. She didn't open up to the guy. Maybe the guy is open-minded. He would have accepted her the way she is. And if he's so open-minded, why can't he accept it now that he has found out? In this situation, yes, the situation has not changed. No. If you had the ability to be for open three minded good before years, the marriage, for three good years, you've been keeping this away from me. What we, else would you be keeping we away from me? We were only dating. You see, it's not over until it's over. And your family kept it away from me because definitely your family will know. Probably the mothers. So, me, if I'm the guy, I would advise him to just. Are you a Christian? Are you a Bible believing, tongue talking Christian? <laughs> this one, let's put the Bible aside. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Indeed. With this one, let's because and with our generation now, uh -huh. everything, anything is possible. So the guy too should have asked her, "Are you bi or do you have the two organs? Are you interested in ladies? Are you?" Mm. You know, we are in a different generation Apparently, now. Apparently, the questions you need to ask a man or a woman you're dating these days. You, it's, yes. I, mean, I mean, more has been added. It's been revised and reviewed. Yes. And so if you're you okay ask... with it, you go with it. If you're not okay with it, you withdraw. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes, okay. my lady. Please. Now, um, the deed has already been done. Mm -hmm. Right? So the woman lied because... No, the woman didn't say the truth because... About she didn't her... offer the information. Yes, because... She was scared. That's she what we are assuming, that she was scared of rejection. Mm -hmm. Now, as a man, as, as her husband, mm -hmm. can you love her beyond her? Because it's not, it's not something that she has done that is really huge. It can you love she her? That caused it. Yes, can you love her beyond that? And I heard there's, that we have cure for this kind of thing. They can yeah. really, like, their surgery and things. Can you really love her above this? Mm. It's not that like she went to cheat. On someone or she has stolen someone something that's you a, know that there's a cause of what a genetic disorder yes. something she so, had no it, control so of. you can still solve that problem and she will still be a faithful wife hmm. 
you will solve that problem and she'll still be with you. The only reason why she didn't say is because maybe she was scared of rejection. So as a man, you, you just, what if tomorrow she, she, she's a deformed person? What would you do? You are a lady, yeah. that is why. So, no, but, you but lady, if that's you really why love, you are, you are, that's why you are tuning into that If you really love topic. someone, if you really love someone, you should love them beyond. Beyond. You should look beyond. Because mm. if you are only looking at what see, we are human beings. The only time you 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 are you are even away from deformities when you are dead. Thank because you. People are so both everyone. Saying, so uh, for the happen. man who is saying that she's just a woman. So for instance, if after the um, wedding you had an accident and you are incapacitated, would you want her to love you still? Okay. So this one had it it tunes a different way. Because a relationship is based on trust. And trust is also like a mirror. Once it is broken, you can get the pieces, but you can't fix them again. Mm -hmm. So if you have something like this, which you know is not something you can hide, one day, one day I'll find out. Why don't you come out, just tell me. If I'm okay, cool. I and mean, there, I, I there are ways. I can imagine her calling me and saying, Brother, can we pray before I tell you this? <laughs> but definitely, you know, one day it will come out. She even casually says that, you know that I am not just a woman. Who, I am a man and a woman put together. You have a laugh and not believe it. That will, be, that will be the trust you have in the guy. So if you are not able to tell the guy this thing, what again will you be hiding from the man? Yes. I wouldn't be secure yes. ever in that relationship. Yes, darling. Um, if everybody wants to refer to the Bible, then let's just be fair. There are other people in the Bible that have gone through the same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe not exactly as having your wife ha um, having two organs. Mm -hmm. Well, look at Hosea. Mm -hmm. God specifically asked him to marry a woman that is a prostitute. Thank and you. God specifically told him that this woman is going to be unfaithful to you. Mm -hmm. So with, even with Hosea's issue, God actually told him, you have this, you have this, you have this. And we should know that love is beyond what you see. Love is beyond what you feel. If you, if you are going to love someone, you should have in mind that I'm going to love you for the next 10 years. And for the next 10 years or 20 or 50 years, whatever that would happen, am I still going to love you? If you are ready to accept that, then definitely you can get into the marriage or the relationship. And besides, if he's a man, sorry, he's a man, right? And he has seen this about his wife. Or the wife, the woman was not able to tell him because she's scared, fine. But you've been able to see that she didn't tell you, you saw it yourself. What do you think are the things you can do for her? That is what proves your love. Love is not just saying, I love you. And then because it's a wedding night, I want to have sex action. with you. Love Madame is romantic. action. Oh, this one deserves Madame a clap. Romantic. Let me clap for you for yes, now. So, like I was saying, <laughs> so that is so the more reason no, why you don't it, leave. That's the, I bet. Yeah, that is the more reason why you don't leave such a person to go. And besides, if you love somebody and situations like this happen that's why you love the person more because that's you, when the person needs your love because more. there you feel like you want to help all right so you listen to the person and you look for solution to such a problem but you don't leave the person and don't blame the person as well huh. because me for me i still believe the person has told so many people already Ms. and Nancy. they left and she prayed so maybe and she, she prayed. Yeah, so she the prayed guy, and God has listened this to her, could I mean, be her prayer. An answer. No, yeah. This could be what the God yeah, has so actually. I disagree. I still want to disagree because you see, I am still hitting on the Christianity thing. That okay, because so, you see, yeah. because they keep saying, says, we should speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Why did the lady hate something? Because you knew there was something. That will definitely pop up one so, day. So can I also ask you a question? It definitely. Can I ask you a question? Let, let, me, let me finish. Something that you were able to abstain for three years. Mm -hmm. How could the same thing disturb you from marrying such a person? Because he didn't know there's going to be that uh, uh, child. Uh, or whatever. Okay. You understand? So if, if, if you are... If let you are... me... Let the gentleman is still in the studio with us. And I'd want to ask him something. When you went there for the first time and you touched her and you found a manhood and you looked again and you found her woman, how was the experience? How did you feel? How do you feel now about this woman? Uh, I would say that I was scared. My libido died. I haven't been able to get an erection up till now. Oh my goodness. So psychological wise, I cannot, in good faith,
be able to have intercourse with my wife. Now, I didn't marry just because of intimacy or whatever, because we have to procreate children too. Mm. But if I cannot bring myself in penetrating my wife, how can I make children then? Would she also allow me to go and sleep somewhere and make babies? Mm. She's also in love with me, right? Mm. People, medically, is there a solution? I mean, legally, if he wants out, what is the process and how long would it take? My name is Anastasia Hammond. I'm a lawyer by profession and I work with Spring Legal Consultancy. A hermaphrodite is a person with both genitals, that is the penis and the vagina at the same time. First and foremost, let me start by defining what a marriage is. There are several definitions when it comes to marriage, but I would like to quote as it was indicated in an English case called Hide and Hide, that a marriage is a voluntary union between a man and a woman to the exclusion of all others, which means that marriage is heterosexual. It is supposed to be between the opposite sex. So it's supposed to be between a man and a woman. And we all know that um, there are certain basic characteristics that defines who a man is or who a woman is. That is why even when a woman is pregnant and wants to know the sex of the baby, the doctors are able to determine that based on the genital of the baby. So that if the, the baby has penis, then it is assumed that it is a boy. If the baby has a vagina, it is assumed that it's a girl. So, for marriage, it has to be between two opposite sex, with the man having the penis and the woman having the vagina. Now, for the purpose of this discussion, um, let me explain what voidable marriage is. So, for voidable marriage, we are saying that the marriage is valid until a court of competent jurisdiction declares that the marriage is a nullity. And with that, the party claiming that the marriage is a nullity must initiate proceeding in court, known as the nullity proceeding. So you, you, you petition the court with your grounds that, based on one or two things, you think that the marriage is a nullity and you want the court to pronounce it as such. One of those grounds is when the marriage has not been consummated. Now, what is consummation? Consummation is when there is an intercourse, and the intercourse must achieve complete penetration in the normal sense. In the normal sense means that there should be penetration through the vagina and not any other place. So with this particular story, the couple, they have not slept together ever since they celebrated the marriage. And the consummation I'm talking about, it should happen after the marriage ceremony. So that if the couple who was dating or courting had any form of intercourse, it will not amount to the consummation we are talking about here. This should be done after the marriage ceremony. So with this particular instance, the couple, they have not slept together. So it is assumed that their marriage is voidable. If the man so thinks that the lady has been dishonest and as a result does not want the marriage again, what's he can do is to initiate what we call nullity proceedings in court, stating the basis for wanting to nullify the marriage. And for this particular story, the man's um, um, ground will be that the marriage has not been consummated, as stated in Section 13 of the Matrimonial Courses Act, so that um, if there is sufficient proof that indeed the marriage has not been consummated, then the court can declare the marriage as a nullity. But until then, until he initiates the nullity proceedings, the marriage, as I said earlier on, is considered valid and he cannot remarry because that would be a, a, a form of a bigamy which is punishable by law. It's, it's a criminal offense in the criminal jurisdiction in the Act 29. So. If the man really wants to divorce, I mean, this is not even a divorce because in the first place, the marriage is not valid. It's not valid, it's voidable. But it can be corrected. If, they really, if he really wants to go ahead with the marriage, then what they can do is to seek medical advice. And then if it's corrected, then they can consummate the marriage. 
Yeah, so my name is uh, Dr. Derek Amwatin. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist in the Kolibu Teaching Hospital Lab. Also a fellow in reproductive endocrinology and infertility, uh, where we attend to uh, people with, especially women with uh, endocrine problems regarding their hormones, their development, as well as fertility related problems. Uh, so today, the issue we have at stake has to do with somebody with uh, claim uh, to be a hermaphrodite. Uh, generally, we tend not to use that term any longer. Uh, a lot of us tend to describe it as uh, disorders of uh, sexual uh, development or disorders of sexual differentiation. And there are several possibilities. There are several types that are available. And uh, we see, even though it's not quite often, every now and then you pick up especially babies that are freshly born and the first thing that gives it away is when they have ambiguous genitalia. So you look down at the genitalia and you cannot tell whether what you see is a male genitalia or a female genitalia. Unfortunately in our sub-region when people pick it up instead of seeking help early so that they can properly assign gender or assign the proper sex to the person they tend to hide and uh, keep it until very late on uh, in life, then there is confusion as to whether the person is a boy or a girl. Uh, the, the possibilities that are available, you can actually have one who is genetically a girl or a female. However, the development was such that it ended up developing things that look a phallus that looks like a penis or scrotum in addition in addition to a vagina or some other internal uh, female organs. Then we also have one who is genetically a male. Uh, however, the, um, he failed to develop male features. And so even though the person is genetically male, uh, there was failure to properly androgen or yes, uh, virilize the person. So he comes up and you may see features that looks like a female. Of course, there is also the true hermaphrodite where you can actually have both male organ, female organ, or you may actually have testes and ovaries at the same time. So genetically, once you assess, you can tell there are male features and there are female features right down to the genes. And that actually uh, is one option that is actually the true hermaphrodite. So for this your um, case that has come in, it's difficult to tell exactly which one, but of, from the analysis and the description we are having, uh, it has both female-like genitalia and male-like genitalia. So it falls in this class of uh, disorders of uh, sexual differentiation. And so it's important to check out certain things to be able to properly assign gender as to whether indeed it's a male or a female. But uh, having read the person as a female for, I'm sure, over 20 years, uh, there really may be no point trying to change the person to a male. It's important to work out and see how best you can actually preserve sexual function. And the first thing I will say here, which you need to know, is for all of us, the most important sexual organ to start with is the brain. It's the mind. It starts from the brain. So we can actually simulate something if it is let's say you want to assign a female gender for instance we can actually take out the phallus and then be able to create uh, with the help of the urogynecologist be able to create uh, some semblance of a vagina and they may actually be able to have sexual intercourse especially if it is not ex extreme uh, of course you may not be able to uh, penetrate as long as you will for the natural uh, woman, uh, but there is the possibility of creating something uh, to be able to allow some sexual intercourse. You are welcome back. Yes, we heard uh, from the technical people, the professionals, and uh, counselor pastor is here. Hmm. Also, for at this point in our lives, do we say that take the liberties of not really? wait until the D-Day and have a taste before you go in there? Um, humanly speaking, uh, if you get to know the truth about such a situation, uh, 
it will be easy for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are, mm -hmm. how many hours you can pray, uh, how anointed you are. At this time, touch the anointed and do the prophet time. Mm -hmm. um, once you see something like that, you'll be broken. It will. Like the gentleman said, until today, his he's not been able who, to lift he's it. He's not been able to perform. Jeez. Uh, the reason why he's not able to perform is because uh, psychologically, uh, the shock of it. Mm -hmm. So like, what is this? I mean, mm. so this is what I've lived with mm. all these years. The disappointment, the shock, the, the, the brokenness. And so for me, one, the gentleman will need counseling. Okay. Other than that, it's going to affect him a lot. A clinical and number two, even or a though, psychologist. Yes. Even though he's disappointed, something can still be done for the woman. Mm -hmm. That is, if the man genuinely love her and do not want to let her go. In this case, if, if he decides to let her go, so, could we say that he was not really in love? No, we will not see that. But at the point, you see, when you are disappointed and you are not able to control your emotions, you can make decisions and two things happen. Either it benefits you or it does not benefit you. Yeah. Out of shock, mm -hmm. humanly. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to your question. Do we, are we supposed to taste or not to taste? Thank I do, dear. I mean, this is, I mean, what we call it is drink. But I need to taste it to know exactly what it is, right? Wow, it's that nice. That color looks good. Yeah. Now, let's try it and see. Mm. It's nice. Refreshing indeed. Yeah, but now not I always. can say it is but not refreshing. Always. Not always. Uh, yeah. Let me explain a few things here. It doesn't matter how many times you sleep with somebody. It doesn't matter how many times you see their nakedness. Mm -hmm. If you don't love them, nothing can keep you. Hmm. Having sex with your partner is not a guarantee of marriage. And also... See their nakedness does not guarantee that you're going to have a successful marriage. Okay, so I'm not having sex. I'm a Christian. I'm not having. Can I just inspect it? Touch are, you a, it? are you an inspector? <laughs> so that we, we come back. <laughs> what do you want to inspect? I have to kiss this person. Kiss? And, yes. Uh -huh. Deep French kisses. I'm and, kiss and, one. And, and know how my body reacts to them. Number one. Number two, I want to be held by them and, and see if this person can accommodate my body shape and size. You know, I, I want you to You don't see. need to kiss, cuddle me to know my size. You have seen my size. Oh, no. How do I see I'm yourself coming. whilst we sit so, here? No, I'm not talking about this. Then? I'm talking about body. Uh, no, I'm, so don't conclude. You are not talking about this. Thank you. No, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. Please, uh, he wasn't talking about this. Yes, He's talking yes. about this. Now, to be able to know whether she's a woman yes. or not a woman, mm -hmm. there are many ways. How? Now, number one, for counselors, a professional counselor, when you come to us and you want to marry, there are tests we will let you go do. For example, HIV. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many times some of them will tell you, go and do a test and find out if the man is a man mm -hmm. in terms of his sperms. Mm -hmm. We also want you to do a test and run a test to find out if the woman is a woman. In terms of probably if she's not a barren woman, or she's yeah, able to. So we do all this test. Now, once you go to the doctor, definitely the doctor will know and find out. No, but doctor patient confidentiality. If I come to have a test, you have no business telling somebody that I have both man and woman. Thank you. Thank you. It's unethical. Now, we need to understand that we are at the edge of getting married. Nothing should be hindered from my partner. <laughs> and that is what brings a lot of divorce. And separation to marriages. When people hear something for the first time and they live in shock. So like, then Makofi, what? Did not weigh me now all these years and I've been able to live with this? No, I can't stay, stay in it. And so what we are advising people to do is that once you make up your mind to accept their proposal and you are ready to have a journey with them, please be transparent enough. Now, please, we don't communicate to understand ourselves. We communicate to know ourselves. I can communicate with you to understand you, but I can't tell other people I know you. Yes. But in a relationship, we communicate to know each other. Yeah. In the place of knowing each other, you need to be transparent. You need to be loyal. You need to be faithful. Don't lie. Let me, let me say this. It doesn't matter the kind of love you have for somebody. If they betray you with this act, you can be broken and it can lead to divorce, no matter how you love them. 
Mm. Let's be real. Forget about the tones you speak. No, no, no. Also, for, you see, there are things that people struggle with in communicating. So as a person, I'm uncomfortable about talking about, mm. quote and unquote, my sexual preferences or my inabilities. Do I still talk about it because I want to be Yes, yes, yes. Now, let me emphasize on this. When you start dating or courting somebody, mm -hmm. one of the things you need to talk about has to do with your sexual patterns. Mm. You need to ask questions about who you are dealing with. Are you a sex addict? Do you like sex? How many times so, do you want it in a day? Yes, you need to find out. How hard do you want it? Yes. How gentle do you Do you like rough it? sex? Mm -hmm. You should be able to talk about where you, you are courting someone. Do you oral sex? Thank you. You Would should you? be able to. You see, the problem with our generation is that we don't talk about many things. And then we enter into it. We don't talk about many things. Mm -hmm. So you enter and you're like, it over you. this is not what I bargain for, I will die. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the moment you see, you know, when it's big like that, when you see it, now, oh, yeah, no, 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 you show my failing. You know, oh, show my failing. You know. mm. I'm a refugee, Jesus. <laughs> so, so let's, let's be real here. Let's, let's be real here. <laughs> when, you see, courtship is not something we do to entertain ourselves mm -hmm. and entertain our emotions. Yeah. It is something we do thinking about tomorrow. Yeah. So therefore, if you are not ready, you don't start. Don't say yes to a man simply because they look nice. You say yes to them because you see the future. So, so in this case, if he says he wants to opt out, is he right? If he says he wants to stay in, what are the challenges that he's going to encounter? The man has a choice. If the man decides to walk out, this is his choice. That is his choice. Mm. If he decides to stay, choice. But then, if he wants to walk out, walk out. But if you are staying, keep quiet and help the woman. Does he have the mental fortitude? Somebody would decide that I will stay, but doesn't have the mental fortitude. And I, I, Somebody would decide that I will stay, but doesn't even have the finances to give her the help. Like, there is a solution she could There get. are many ways to get help. And remember I said that if the man actually wants to stay, then it means that the man will need a counselor. Yeah. The man probably will need a a psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, somebody should help the man. And because, then the finances? I mean, once you identify a problem, you are halfway solved. Mm. So sometimes we don't always need money. Anyway, even if the man will not have the money to solve that particular problem, the most important thing is if the woman can deliver. Okay. If she's not a barren woman. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Uh, if you decide so to do it by gathering, to done, if you're able you know to gather how, courage. How, how, how much of her is woman and how much of her is man? I mean, if you're, no, 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 you can't. I mean, once it's a man, you know it's a man. Once it's a woman, you know it's a woman. Oh. Now, now, let me, let me. No, be, let no, me. so in her body, you would have to find out how womanly she is and how manly she is. How much hormone she has that is feminine. And, and, and once you start touching her, a uh, few things will come up here and there. I mean, without touching, how would you be able to Apparently, know? Apparently, when he tried to get in there, she had an erection. Oh, my God. I mean, after he's gone through she a She had process. an erection. I mean, do, yes. do you hear the expression? She had an erection. Okay. If it were to be me, I would just push this one down and start this one. <laughs> yeah. Also for I'm bold your enough. imagination I am, I am bold like a lion. Uh, I'm telling you. <laughs> So I will just do some driving alignment and then. My all. goodness. So for me, uh, for me, there is no, there shouldn't be any fear. Uh, the gentleman should be able to do well. I mean, for better for worse, you are in already. Thank God she's not committed adultery. Uh, she lied. Forgive her. Hmm. And then please start from somewhere. She, she didn't lie. She actually decided. It's still lies. To share now let me tell you, there are different means and ways to lie. Mm. Once you decide to hide the truth from me, you've lied. No, I no. decided not to share the information and that's You are still a liar. Else. People, let's go for this break. When we come back, we would see what we can do for this gentleman in this situation. <laughs> you are welcome back. This as Confessions on TV3, and the conversation is exciting. A young Christian man's experience, is this a test of God or a test from God or a test by God? And we're discussing it right here in the studios. And uh, uh, yes, you had something to say? Yeah, Miss Nancy, uh, based on what the counselor has just said, okay. My brother is in a very, very serious mess. But you see, 
they are counselors, they are pastors, and they are teachers. So at this juncture, I would like to also help with the counseling. Mm. I want to advise my brother. It's not easy. But like the counselor said, if there's money and he really, really loves the woman, he can have a second thought and then help the woman. But you see, this should be a secret between them. Thank you. Um, and uh, the gentleman is still in the studio. You wanted to say something yes, before I go is, to him? Mine is to the lady. Being you is one of the best things you can ever do to yourself. Mm. Being you is one of the best gifts you, can, you could ever give yourself. Because if you are not you, mm -hmm. you are going to hurt other people. And they might also add up to what you are already going through. Yeah. So accept that you are this person and this is how people react to you. So I'm going to be this person. You're not the only person who's going to be single for life. You could still adopt and take care of your kids. People are doing it. You could also say that, okay, I don't want to be this kind of person. I'll look for money and work on myself. Mm. Either than that, just be you and you'll be fine. And this is for the lady. If the gentleman doesn't have the confidence to be with her, this is great information right there. And uh, hello, dear. Are you okay? <laughs> Too easy. Are you all right? Uh, well, I guess counseling can help. Have you been helped by this conversation? I have, and the uh, young people, they, they have wisdom. So mm. currently, I mean, it was suggested that you need time to, to, to process all of this information. How long do you think you need? Uh, for me, I think it will, if it will help for me to quicken up, she might have to be involved with the counseling session because it's all easy. So you you need some time, right? How long? I can't put my finger on it. You, you, you're not on me sure, and her right? And yeah. Yes. Are you still in love with her? Oh, uh, I don't need you. I can't. I can't. Oh. We'll get there soon. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we're wrapping up the show, but of course we brought a great man of God, a counselor in. He is also the pastor of uh, City of Wisdom. And he still got some wisdom nuggets to share with us. Sir. Um, thank God he's still in love. He, it has, he has answered every situation. Mm. Once you are in love, you need to overlook the weakness of the other parts. Mm. And then you let love works out. So what we're going to do is that, um, apart from he going through a few um, uh, series of sections here and there in the hands of counselors, uh, what we need to do to help him is to make sure he comes back, he's revived mm. in terms of down. He should be revived, mm. number one. And then number two, mentally. Uh, you know what has happened? It, it's going to affect him mentally. Mm. Trust me. And that just by the sight of the woman. The lack of revival. I'm telling you. He's been affected mentally, psychologically, and that is why he's not getting revived. That's what I'm saying. So we need to get him revived. Mm. And also mentally is at the sight, just by sight, by seeing the wife. Hmm. Uh, anything is possible. So uh, they should be separated for a yeah, while? Yeah, that, that is what I am thinking of now. Uh, they should be separated for some time, but then and uh, both sides... churches, everybody will get to know I'm that coming. they just got married and the so girl went back bo to their mother. Bo both sides shouldn't go around talking. Hmm. I mean, there are many couples who are living together yet separated. Hmm. Hmm? The same house, they go to the same church, sit in the same car, Yes. but separated, mm -hmm. and you will never know. Yeah. And so I think that they should give um, that, that, that grace period to themselves uh, so that he will be able to work on himself, uh, on himself, sorry, and then also help the woman out. But once he's in love, it means that he's not ready to give up because the love should be able to overlook all these, you know, mistakes here and there. So for me, he's good to go. It is somewhere over until he gives up. Second Corinthians says that love is patient and love is kind. Love is long suffering. And so we leave the situation of this godly young man and young woman in the hands of love. Let love decide whether they will stick together till death do them part, as they said in front of the altar. Or he would say that God detests. Is beyond me. This has been Confessions on TV3. Same time next week, we come your way. It's been amazing. Thank you for watching.